Peter Ferreira and Duncan Ferguson because of suspension. And the loss of Ferguson is a huge blow as he's already scored eight goals and could have exploited the absence of Richard Goff from the Rangers defence. United bring in teenager Christian Daly for the first time this season. One man who's seen it all is United's longest serving player David Neri, who at the age of 36 is still enjoying his football. Apart from making around 600 first team appearances for United, Neri holds a Scottish record for appearances in European ties, having played in 75 of them. Rangers manager Walter Smith had to delay his team lineup because of a flu virus striking at his squad. With skipper Goff out for three weeks, Smith has also lost David McPherson. Dale Gordon returns to the side for the first time since a 4 3 defeat by Dundee. And one Ranger who's been at the top of his farm recently and quoted for the Scotland squad is the versatile John Brown, who's played mainly in central defence but can also operate at fullback, midfield, or even as emergency striker. He's played in every game this season. The referee is Jerry Evans from Bishop Briggs. So McCoy and Hitley get the match underway, the 69th Premier League game between these clubs. Rangers have won 32 of them, United just 14, and 22 of the games have been drawn. So very much a recast Rangers side this afternoon. Rangers, in fact, uh, have used uh, 22 players this season. Dundee United have had a more settled look about them. But uh, United have lost two of the last four Premier League games. In fact, they've lost three of the last five. If you count the Skull Cup quarter-final, they lost here to Rangers. Rangers are unbeaten in the last nine games. And uh, they've suffered just one reverse this season. That was the 4-3 defeat up the road at Dens Park. And it's Peter Haustra to take it. John Brown has moved well forward, Scott Nisbet's in there as well, so too is Hitley. It's headed away though by Neri, only as far as Ian Ferguson. John Clark got the touch there, Christian Daly in the thick of the action for United. And that was Ferguson's shot right across the face of goal. Goes behind for the goal kick, Alan Main not getting his hand to it. But it was Ferguson getting away from Daly, the ball took a slight attempt. Neri's clearance returned by Brown. And the flag had gone up the referee, allowing play to flow. That's with David Neri. Clark. The flag is raised just below us. And the linesman's obviously unhappy about something. The referee going over for a word. Well, a free kick being awarded to Rangers. Just outside the area. He wants the United defensive wall to retreat. Hauser takes it quickly, it's with John Brown. That's an excellent save by Alan Main. Well, John Brown coming so close to his second goal of the season. It's quickly taken there by Hauser. Brown struck it with his left foot and excellent goalkeeping by Alan Main. And the free kick goes Rangers' way. Eddie van der Hoorn unhappy with the decision. So perhaps a chance for Rangers to do something here. There's plenty of big players in the United penalty area. It's taken by Trevor Stephen. Scott Nisbet, oh, another terrific save by Alan Main. His second of the match. That's now from Brown and from Nisbet. Here's Billy McKinley now for United. Mal pass under pressure by Dale Gordon and he has to concede the throw in Shelley McCoy sticks quickly to Ian Ferguson, Hatley's calling for it Ferguson taking on Neri, good play by Ferguson and again it's well blocked and goes behind for the corner kick that was excellent play by Ian Ferguson who's really on song and Alan Main again there House ready to take it in comes John Brown, it's nicked away at the last moment there by Morris Malpass, that was good defending now it's Alec Cleland for United. And he's fouled by Dale Gordon. And the ball goes behind for the corner kick to Rangers. John Brown is also moving forward as Haustra takes the kick. 
Stuart McCall in his right back roll picks this one up. Is it to Ian Ferguson? Forward now for Dale Gordon, but uh, Alec Cleland it was who provided the cover. So John Brown pulls off the challenge, plays it to Dale Gordon. That's a good cross! Trevor Stephen scores for Rangers! 15 minutes gone, and Trevor Stephen who scored the championship winning goal here in 1990. Also with a header, he does it again. It's his first goal since returning from Marseille. A terrific downward header. And by Robertson. It was a kneel for United, now it's Christian Daly. And he tackles to the ground as he's challenged by Dale Gordon. Free kick to United, and uh, the referee will have a word with the Rangers player. There'll be a word about... Uh, persistent fouling he's pointing out one a uh, while ago on the other side of the park the referee so it's McAnally with the free kick it's aimed at Christian Daly headed away by Brown there's Robertson almost caught in possession there Ali McCoy and the referee is calling over John Clark after that challenge well, things getting slightly heated and uh, the referee might shot they have to go for a yellow card, but uh, as McCoy's tried to shield the ball, and he was taken from behind by the big United centre back. Trevor Stephen. Well, he certainly looks very much in the mood this afternoon, but I've no sooner said that in a complete miss kick, but he's made a marvellous start for the game apart from his goal. Nice little touch there by Dale Gordon to Ian Ferguson. That's a good cross, Hatley's in there, Houstra! Peter Houstra makes it 2-0 to Rangers. 21 minutes gone. Superb play again by Rangers. Um, Peter Houstra gets his third goal of the season. Look at Ian Ferguson here, taking on Billy McKinley, putting in an excellent cross. It was a downward header from Mark Hatley, now it was Houstra with his left foot. To give Alan May no chance whatsoever. Dundee United nil, Rangers two. Harry Connolly. Well, Connolly's got six goals this season. He'll want to add to that this afternoon. He'll want to get United back into this game, but uh, not with that kind of ball. But it's given away by McCall. That's Johnson's shot. A fine effort by Grant Johnson that Dundee got him scrambling across his line. McAnally, McKinley, nice little touch there by Connolly, and the shot going in from Christian Daly. Well, that was better play by United. Paul Sturrock was out screaming at them there to get the ball into the Rangers' penalty area. Lovely little touch by Connolly, and then the first time shot by Christian Daly. Vanderhoorn. Cleland. And the United have to settle for the throw-in. The Daly must get something back soon. The minute's ticking away towards half-time. Vanderhoorn's cross. Well, Johnson got his head to the ball, but uh, no direction, and it goes behind for the goal kick to Rangers. But it was Freddie Vanderhoorn who fired in the cross. And it came off the head of Grant Johnson. Well, passes in there, sweeps it away from the immediate danger area. So, United manager Jim McLean and Paul Sturrock will have plenty to say to the team at half-time. It's not been a good first half at all by United. And there goes the half-time whistle. The well, Rangers can be well pleased with their first half efforts. Trevor Stephen it was after 15 minutes with a downward header after Gordon had provided the cross and then in 21 minutes Hitley and Ferguson combined and there was Haustra to finish it all off. A half-time score here at Tannadice, Dundee United nil, Rangers 2. The match and what's been a disappointing game for them so far, there's absolutely no doubt about that. Uh, last season uh, Rangers took five out of the Eight points with Ali McCoy being a particular scourge. 
scoring on five occasions. Uh, just got away from Hitley there. Houstra hoisting a high one into the air. McCoy's getting a little touch. Swept away by McKinley. It's Christian Daly. And a rash challenge there by Robertson on Cleland. The referee calling over the Rangers player for a lot of warning. Just telling him to cam it down. He was too high. Well, he's very fortunate to get away with a word of warning there because it was rash. There's McCall now to... Rangers rescue. Looks out to Paddy Conley. He loses out now to Ian Ferguson. Good play by Ferguson. That's Trevor Stephen. And he's taken out of the play by Cleland. Well, you've got to say Cleland's unfortunate here. Cleland was just in the end of a very high challenge by David Robertson. He in turn challenges Trevor Stephen. And he's been called over to be booked. And you've got to put that down to inconsistency on the part of the referee. So the yellow card shown to Alec Cleland. That's through now to Paddy Connolly. The chance on here. Well, excellent running by Connolly. Good play by United. Johnson sending the ball in behind Nisbet and the first time shot from Paddy Connolly. McCoyst in ahead of Malpass, now it's Haitley. Vanderhoorn for United, McKinley, Vanderhoorn again. Long ball for Christian Daly to chase. Conley's in there too. Cleland coming forward in support. Good play by Conley. Cleland's cross. And the shot going in there from John O'Neill, well, that wasn't far away. Well, United up's on by... A big home support, starting to put tumbling together. It was left there to John O'Neill. He stepped inside Stuart McCall and let fly. But it's John Brown now playing the ball through Telly McCoy. A one against one situation. It's McCoy against Malpass. United players racing back. McCoy steps away from the United skipper. And it was Billy McKinley sending the ball behind as Mark Hatley came through at the far post. McAnally looking for Conley, it's cleared though by Robertson. McAnally again for United. Cleland, McAnally. Clears from Robertson, that's McCoyst. Now Dale Gordon's going in a terrific run through the middle. It's McCoyst decides to go it alone, gets away from Malpass. Well, that would have been a marvellous goal. It turned out to be a terrific save by Alan Men. But McCoyst getting away from Malpass. And despite the fact Dale Gordon was going through the middle, McCoy saw the chance, and uh, that was a terrific save by Alan Min. Nice little switch of pace here by Gordon. A good cross, Hitley's in there, it breaks to Houstra. Peter Houstra, and again it's Alan Min to United's rescue. Now Peter Houstra almost getting his second goal of the afternoon. It was excellent play by Dale Gordon, it almost found Hitley. It broke through to Houstra, and there was Alan Min to push the ball behind for the corner. That's Houser himself to take it. Hitley gets in the free header. That was straight at the goalkeeper, but again, you've got to ask questions of the Dundee United defence. I mean, Hitley had a lot of room there. John O'Neill. McKinley. To McAnally. Nicely laid off by O'Neill. McKinley again. Back to O'Neill it goes. Well, he's, surely that's a booking this time for David Robertson. Well, he's getting away with it again. And he quite clearly took the player out of the game. And again, he survives. This is Johnson. Nicole watching him all the way. Gets the touch. Again. Nice play by Ian Ferguson. A long ball played for Hatley to chase. And he's pulled to the ground by McAnally. Well, McAnally is in trouble here. 
There was certainly a bit of jousting going on between the two players. Hitley seemed to be getting the better of the United defender. And then he just pulled him to the ground. So McAnally called over by the referee. That was more akin to Murrayfield than Tanner Ice. And now it's a free kick to Rangers, taken quickly by Trevor Stephen. Nisbet's there, but the ball goes behind for the goal kick. John Brown wins it against Christian Daly. Return by Johnson. The offside flag has gone up. So a frustrating afternoon for Christian Daly so far. Time running away from Dundee United. We're just over midway through the second half, still Rangers have their two goal cushion. And here they come again through Trevor Stephen. To Dale Gordon. Trying to get away from Vanderhoorn. It was good play again by Dale Gordon. They put McAnally under pressure. Here's Trevor Stephen. Dale Gordon to Ian Ferguson. He's blocked though by Vanderhoorn, through to McCoy, who's onside. Well blocked by Alan Mayne, it's McCoy again. <laughs> Alan McCoy for Rangers. 70 minutes gone, and Alan McCoy does it again. He gets his 17th goal of the season. And the Rangers captain for the afternoon celebrates. There was some excellent work by Dale Gordon initially to regain possession for Rangers. Alan Mayne then saved well from McCoy. But it was McCoy again, and despite the fact men get an arm to the ball and two defenders on the goal line, McCoy strikes once more for Rangers. Yeah, Walter Smith, who spent so long here at Tanadice, is delighted with the scoreline. Archie Knox, his assistant there alongside him. What a formidable management team they have proved to be. Switch of play to Stuart McCall. Trevor Stephen going in the overlap. The early cross, same that to McCoyst. Here's Houstra. And the ball goes in off Freddie van der Hoorn. And Peter Houstra gets number four for Rangers. 75 minutes gone. Dundee United nil, Rangers four. Well, it was Trevor Stephen who provided the cross. Come off Freddie van der Hoorn, and then Hauser's shot was deflected by the defender into the back of the net. Hauser will claim that one. Dundee United nil, Rangers four, and it's an absolute rout. Cleared by Robertson. Now it's Hauser. And there goes the final whistle on what's. Uh, you know, overwhelming victory for Rangers here at Tanadice. They led 2 0 at half time. And after 70 minutes, some superb play by Ali McCoy's persistent play as at the second attempt to get the ball into the back of the net to make it 3 0. And then after 75 minutes, Peter Houstra scored Rangers fourth and he's on second, a deflected shot of Freddie van der Hoorn. The final score here at Tanadice Dundee United 0, Rangers 4. Now, the fact that you had uh, the likes of your captain missing today. David McPherson was out. There was no place for Mikhail Lichenko. The battle is really on for places. How confident do you feel of, of holding on to your own? Uh, I just take each game at a time, Jerry. and uh, if I'm doing well, then I'll, I'll hope to be playing the following week. I just take one game at a time, just keep battling away. Can you believe after everything you've been through with illness and injury, you're in a Skull Cup final and you're, you're so far ahead at the top of the league? Uh, it's been a difficult time for me over the past two years and it's nice to get back into the team and get a regular run and uh, as you say we're in a Skull Cup final now we're four points ahead so it's nice. I know you've got to settle back into the Rangers team but you must still harbour ambitions for Scotland. Uh, I don't, I've not really thought anything about Scotland, uh, I just want my regular game at Rangers and if the Scotland thing comes then it's a bonus for me. Well Jerry, not many sides uh, can live with Rangers when they're playing like that. That's right, that was their best performance, I think, of the season to date. Uh, they had a very good second half against Aberdeen a few weeks ago, but over the piece there, they went for the jugular right from the start and scored some great goals. First goal for Trevor Stephen since he returned fr from Marseille. A virtuoso performance, made a great first touch from him. He was hitting passes that uh, very few players can see, and uh, he even managed a bit of defending.
Yeah, I think probably the midfield area was the most impressive for me yesterday watching them. You know, Trevor Stephen, when you think of players like Dale Gordon who came in yesterday and had a smashing game as well. And it really is, when you think of the players that weren't involved for Rangers, just, you know, Gary Stevens, Michael Ochenko, McPherson, Goff, and now bad news for other teams with Trevor. Stretch there, Ian Ferguson coming in. And then probably as fit as he has done since he came back, he's just had one or two injury problems. He's making a big, big difference since he returned from Marseille, hasn't he? Well, it, well, he is now because he's a lot fitter and a lot stronger. I mean, this is a terrific little bit of play that puts Peter Hoistra through. And as I said, their football was exceptional at times yesterday. Jay, you spoke to Ian Ferguson, Gordon. What, what did you think of his performance? Well, that's the third time in a week we've watched Rangers and Ian Ferguson in particular. We highlighted him last Saturday against Hearts when I thought he had a, a very good game. I thought, um, for me, he was man of the match in the Skull Cup semi-final against St. Johnson midweek, although obviously Ali McCoy's grabbed the headlines. And yesterday, for me, the best of the three, I, th I thought he was outstanding yesterday. Just very confident, and it's, it's important that he's fit for Wednesday. He went off with a little strain yesterday, and a standing ovation for the Rangers fans as well, which must have been sweet music for him. But uh, it's important to get him fit for the, what I think will be a tricky little European time midweek. He certainly was on song. I mean, he's nice little come a long there way as well, down. you know, and that, that, that's all about confidence too. And the ability, as Gordon pointed out last week as well, the ability to hit long passes there. But it wasn't just about good individuals, was it? It was good teamwork, and, and Rangers did indulge in a passing game. And uh, I mean, stringing six, seven, eight passes together at times. Yeah, well, I think um, obviously there's a temptation with Mark Hately's playing to maybe knock in a lot of a high balls, but that never happened just They were just knocking the ball about. Um, I mean, really reminiscent of the Liverpool side a couple of years ago. That uh, I mean, every single um, every single uh, move seemed to finish in a, a shot or a cross. I mean, Dale Gordon there, what, what a game he had. I mean, if he's in the shop window, uh, he certainly put a few quid uh, <laughs> on himself yesterday on his value. And uh, anyone watching that performance, uh, playing maybe in a slightly different role than usual, but of course uh, Stuart McCall, he fitted in at, at right back, and uh, here's the irresistible well, man himself. At the <laughs> Who, well, who actually, the, the two strikers yesterday um, played terrific as well. Mark Haitley thought he had a great game. And Ali, another goal. A, a tremendous ball from John Brown there out of defence to Ali McCoy. What about his overall performance? Yeah, he's having a great season. I've had a go at John Brown in the past when the red mist descend. And, you know, <laughs> when, when John concentrates on the football, as he's been doing of late, uh, the likes of Ian Ferguson as well, when they concentrate on the football, they don't have to prove they're dyed in the wool Rangers men. I think we've all got the message now. And John Brown used the ball well. Sometimes he's criticised for that. But what a terrific set servant he's been to, to Rangers. And the fact he's been mentioned possibly for a, a Scotland place in emergency. You've got to remember Brian Irvin get a cap, Doug Rugby get a cap, you know, in emergency situations. So why not this fella as well, wholeheartedly? I have to have some sympathy for poor old Alan Main and the Dundee United goal, Gordon. To say the least, he had a busy afternoon. <laughs> well, as I said, every, every attack seemed to finish with, with a shot at goal or a cross. And um, just as well he was on his toes because... Um, well, certainly it's a, the, the it's set, a mistake here, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little bit of a mix-up between the linesman and the referee here. The, the, the linesman uh, nearly got punished and really through no fault of Alan Main. But just as well, he was in good form because, as I said, the defenders in front of him. Had a, had a bad day. I mean, we were all over the place. I mean, this, this one here, good save, but Scott Nisbet should have scored there. And one or two little, couple of the goals that beat him, little deflections, a little good save for Ali McCoy's there. Yeah, it was unfair he had to, to lose four goals, but he, he certainly stopped United, I think, from, from getting a real hiding there. Yeah, they were swamped. Jerry, it's virtually been all about Rangers. What can you say, if anything, about Dundee United? What's, what's ahead for them? Well, I mean, Bowman and McAnally were on the bench yesterday. Um, now, maybe they've got little niggling strains. They, they certainly haven't been playing regularly this season, but it was...